So first profile, 2,300 followers. Second profile, 478,000 followers. Yes, I have intentionally not told you the platform because I want you to focus on these two numbers, right? Small profile on the right for me, big profile on the left for me. Keep that in mind. So when I show you these posts, which post got more reach? This is impressions. How many people saw it? Small profile, large profile. And then which post is going to get more engagement? So any guesses on the reach first? Which one do you think is going to get more impressions when I show you this post? Big profile, small profile. Who thinks it's small profile? Hands up. OK, we got a couple folks. OK, who thinks it's the big profile? Hands up for reach. Cool. How about engagement? So clicks, likes, comments, click-through rates, dwell time, any, any marker of engagement. Small profile? Hands up. OK. Big profile? Hands up. I see some people have like flipped, right? They think big profile gets the reach, small profile gets the engagement. Seems like we've got it. All right, let's take a look at the posts. So full disclosure, this is a post that I published. I have all the stats on this, therefore I can actually show this because I can show you details. Um, so I posted this on my own personal profile talking about going into the office for the first time since COVID quarantine, right? And that post actually did pretty well. It started to get some traction. And so my social media manager who runs the Atlassian corporate page, which at the time had almost half a million followers, said, hey, we should talk about this, right? We have this great team anywhere where you can work remotely, you can work from the office. This post did well for you, so let's publish it. So that's what they published. You notice it's the same picture. It's talking about the same topic. Um, there's a little bit of differences in the hashtag, but my profile at the time had about 2,300 followers company page had almost half a million. So what happened? So I pulled these stats from Shield. So for those of you who are looking for some additional stats on your personal or company profiles, um, Shield app is a great way to get those. And you'll see, I got over 66,000 impressions, 1,600 reactions, 60 comments. That's pretty solid. What happened on the company page with over 100 times my follower count? They only got 33,000 impressions, so I doubled the impressions. They also only got 141 reactions, so I had 10x the reactions, and they only got 21 comments, so I tripled the comments. My personal profile won on both reach and engagement. So clearly we need to just kill all the company pages, right? Like clearly we just need to have some random employee posting everything, right? Well, as we know, it's more complicated than that. And so that's what I wanna talk about today is the new rules of social media. And I wanna frame it up in terms of the social media spectrum. So on one end, we have the company. And what the company wants to do is communicate. They have something to say and you're gonna to listen to it. I have opinions and thoughts and webinars and events, and you people all have to listen to it, right? If we look at the actual definition of the word communicate, it means to exchange information. It's the one-way broadcast. Now, in this model, when a company is in this phase on the spectrum, what do they want their followers to do? They want them to amplify that, right? You hear this talked about all the time, employee amplification. And this is where all the company pages are saying, okay, employees, we want you to go like, share, retweet. You see this with a lot of the platforms. We're gonna put this information in and we want our followers to amplify it. Now, if we think of this like a party, this is like the party host bringing everyone in for a multi-level marketing pitch. Have you ever been to one of those? I have and it's disconcerting, right? Like somebody came up to me in the grocery store and I was looking for friends and so they invited me to this and I show up to this house party and in fact, it's literally like chairs lined up and they're trying to pitch me on Herbalife. So that's what a lot of companies are doing, right? Nobody wants to go to that party. Now, I think most companies are starting to understand that that one-way broadcast doesn't work. Nobody is clicking on your links. No one cares about your webinar. So we've moved into this conversation phase. Now, if we look at the actual definition of conversation, it's an exchange, it's two-way or multi-way. It's not just one person saying something, it's both people get to talk. Now, the problem here 
is that companies still think they're in charge of these conversations. I have things to say, and like sometimes you can talk too, but really we need to get back to me. So you can talk until there's an awkward pause and then I'm gonna jump right in, it's gonna be about me again, right? What do they want their followers to do in this case? They want them to advocate. They want them to come in and say, hey, Ashley, come join this conversation. Atlassian, join this conversation. So when you look at employee advocacy programs, what you start to see is that the companies are asking the employees to tag the company or to mention the company. Oh, somebody is talking about collaboration software. Oh, Atlassian, I got you. I mean, thank you, but also that's kind of awkward. Again, if you think about the party scenario, you don't see the host going around to every table and being like, what you talking about? What are you guys talking about? Like, that's weird. Right? Nobody wants to be in that situation. So what I'm suggesting is that we actually need to start moving to the other side of the spectrum, community. Now, if we look at the actual definition of the word community, it's a group of like-minded people exchanging ideas and helping each other. That sounds like way more fun to me than awkwardly getting tagged into a conversation or awkwardly getting shouted at. Now, if a company is behaving and fostering community on social media, what do they want their followers to do? They want them to be ambassadors. And if we look at the definition of the word ambassador, it means to go and speak on behalf of. It's to be a representative. So you'll notice I did not start this presentation telling you who I am. I did not start this presentation telling you about the company I work for. I started this conversation talking about a topic that we all want to learn about. Presumably, you're here because you want to understand things about marketing, and in this case, social media. And so again, if we go back to our party metaphor in this spectrum, the best parties are where the host has created a space for really cool people to have cool conversations. They introduce each other, right? How many times have you been in a place and somebody says, hey, actually, Ashley, you should meet this other person. And I get to talking with them and it turns out now we're gonna be best friends because, oh my gosh, this is the best connection ever. How do I feel about the person that introduced me to my new best friend? I really like them. I'm gonna keep hanging out with them and hanging out in the spaces that they create. So how do we measure this? And I get this question all the time. How do we measure this? Because if we're communicating, Right? We're in this one-way broadcast mindset. We're looking at CTR, so click-through rate, and entrances to an owned property. I want you to leave the platform where you found me and come to my place so that, in Jacob's world, I can know everything about you. Right? As soon as I get you onto my property, I own it. I get to see what you do. So of course I don't want you to stay on LinkedIn or Twitter. I want you to come to my property. And so if you are primarily in the phase of looking at success on social media, as click-through rates from the native platform and then entrances to your owned properties, you're probably in this communication phase. In the conversation phase, here you do start to look at in-feed engagement, and you also start to look at mentions. So again, this is a company-led conversation. So you wanna see, are people liking my posts? Are people commenting on my content? Are people tagging me into the conversation? But in the community phase, you start to look at things like sentiment and multi-channel engagement. It's freaking hard to measure the community phase. You've got to look at it over time. You've got to start stitching together multiple channels. And in some cases, attribution software is not going to tell you these things. So how do we go about measuring that? Well, I'm going to show a couple of examples later in the presentation that prove that, in fact, you can track some community engagement. So, oh, sorry, I saw somebody was looking. I'll let you grab a picture. If I see cameras up, I'll pause. So, you know, be real obvious about it. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at some of the rules in the real world. Rule number one, do non-scalable activities. So when we launched an update to our flagship product, Jira, we actually went on Twitter and had our program managers, product managers, engineers, and product marketers directly answering questions from their personal handles. And so you can see this person says, I like this trend of PMs directly answering some questions, direct accountability and direct feedback. 
is this you answering on your own, or is this an official thing in Atlassian? And the answer is both. If you look at this screenshot, you'll see that there is the branded handle, the Ask Atlassian handle, specifically answering some questions. But what we saw is that people didn't want to hear from the branded handle. Of course, the branded handle is going to give you the company line. It's, it's literally the branded handle. But when the product manager who actually released this feature is in the comments, the tone completely changes. And so we saw some people who came out and they were so angry about this lack of feature or the way this feature was implemented or I hate this. Why did you do it this way? And the PM comes in and says, actually, that's really great feedback. Do you mind jumping on a call with me and walking me through the actions that you're taking so that I can put this back into our next sprint? And people immediately change their tone as soon as they realize there's a human behind the handle, there's a human behind the feature, and they're willing to talk to me? Crazy, right? So we saw quite a bit of sentiment shift. And again, this is not scalable. Right? Having that one-to-one -one engagement completely changes the tone and the sentiment precisely because they know it's a human. Sweetfish is a podcasting company, so they're an agency, and they actually take this a step further by hosting marketing squads. These are monthly masterminds that they specifically curate. So they host a number of different podcasts. I've been a podcast uh, guest on one of their episodes. And we had a great conversation, and I started to see them showing up in my LinkedIn feed, my personal feed, all the time with really smart content. So I started engaging with them. So they started to get those signals. Oh, okay, Ashley, she's, she's kind of friendly towards Sweetfish. And so they reached out and asked if I would join this mastermind, which I did. And I got online. This actually happened just last week. They restarted them. And it's a group of eight of us, and six out of the eight I recognized from LinkedIn. And I'm like, Camille! My friend, Ray, how are you? Like, Mike, oh my gosh, wait, did you, you took your glasses off, right? And, he, and they're looking at me and they're like, oh my gosh, you're not wearing, I mean, I am wearing a scarf today, but I'm wearing a scarf in my profile picture and I showed up not wearing a scarf and he's like, I don't even recognize you without your scarf, right? So they've curated these groups of people who have similar problems. And I have to tell you, I have never actually worked with Sweetfish, but I'm telling you now, I'm being an ambassador on their behalf to say, if you need podcasting services, I feel very confident telling you that Sweetfish should be in your consideration set because I've had such great community experiences with so many of their employees. Rule number two, engage the whole human. So I love this example from Chewy. It's a pet food brand. Now, this was actually shared on LinkedIn, even though Chewy is a consumer brand. And so this person says um, that they got a defective product. And so they called the customer service um, line at Chewy and said, hey, I got this defective product. I want a refund and I want it replaced. And their newborn was crying in the background. And so the Chewy service rep says, oh, did you just have a baby? And they said, yes, I did. We're so thrilled. It's my first child. And so when they received their replacement dog food, they also received a branded onesie and a book that says, why should, uh, what, what pet should I get as my first pet? And so they share this and say, Chewy, you have blown me away. You acknowledge the birth of my child. Of course, now we have to get a pet. Now I'm going to be a loyal customer forever. Like, this is amazing, right? And I got to say, like, this actually, this example bugs me because this is not fair. Like, Chewy has freaking puppies. How many people in this room have puppies? Unless you're from Chewy, in which case you raise your hand, right? You've got puppies. Okay, you got a leg up. It's not very fair. So they have puppies. How do you do this as a boring B2B brand? Could you do it with something like an incident management tool? So Atlassian makes a tool called Status Page, and this is basically for helping companies communicate to their customer base about service outages. So you know how sometimes your internet goes out and then you're like taking to Twitter to figure out is Comcast doing something in your neighborhood or why isn't this working? And if you use cloud services, again, Slack, Twitter, Google Docs, if you can't get into your account one day, first thing you do is go find out is, is Twitter down or is Google down? Status page helps you do that, right? Pretty boring thing. And so we noticed something interesting on Twitter. This person, this person says, doing some on-call work right now, new family team member on the way. This might be the last time my wife and I will experience downtime. Oh, 
what is this? This is interesting. Turns out this fellow is a user of status page and he started a status page to document the real time birth of his child. And there are so many amazing jokes in here, right? He's like, good news, everyone. Things continue to progress as expected. Nurses and doctors are feeling super optimistic about our little engineer's arrival later today. And so he goes on to share some updates about the incident, which is the birth of his first child. And we were so thrilled to see this little nugget of using our tool in completely the wrong way, but we loved it. And so our social media team sent him a note and said, hey, we love this so much. We're sending well wishes to the mother-to-be. Um, if you have a bit more downtime, we want to share some appreciation and congratulations. Here's a code for you to go buy a onesie for your child. And it says, we, um, please keep the up updates coming. We're excited. And of course, the user said, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Thank you so much. And we said, you're so welcome, Andy. We're watching for updates for the incident. So even a boring software tool, if you're listening, and you have the mindset that this is about community can make these things happen where you delight someone and you celebrate those milestones in their lives, whether it has anything to do with your product or not. Rule number three, partner with the ambassadors. So this is George B. Thomas. And for any of you who are in the HubSpot or inbound communities, you probably know George. And I actually love George. This guy, you think I have a lot of energy? Like you think I talk fast and I'm really big? You have not met George. George puts me to shame. We have a good time anytime we happen to be on a call together. So you'll notice a few things about George's background, right? His whole office is orange. And actually on the back of his screen, this event grow is by HubSpot. You'll also notice in this picture here, he's got badges from the last 10 years of inbound. He's been at inbound the HubSpot conference for the last 10 years. And again, you'll see he's got orange t-shirts. His whole office is orange, which is HubSpot's color. So I'll ask you, is George an employee of HubSpot? Who thinks he's an employee? Now, in theory, I gave it away by telling you the rule. But in fact, he is not an employee. Now, how would your company react to someone painting their whole office orange and having badges from the last 10 years of the conference? So George actually runs a community um, called Sprocket Talk, and it says it's the largest unofficial HubSpot resource. But if you look at this content, you'd be hard pressed to differentiate it from official HubSpot content. Do you think HubSpot is happy about this or trying to shut him down? Because a lot of companies would come in and say, no, 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 you can't use our colors. No, 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 you can't say our name. You're over there. We're over here. You can't run this unofficial community. But in fact, HubSpot leverages this. They recognize that George has built a massive following and trusted conversation around their brand, their content, their tools, and their methodology precisely because he's not an employee. And so instead, they invite him to inbound to act as an MC. He facilitated the inbound after hours show last year. So he attended all the sessions, he synthesized it, he hosted conversations. This is a fellow named Jira Joe. His name is Joe Purcell. I actually got to meet him in person at our Atlassian event just a couple months ago. And he is so in love with Jira, which is one of our products, that he's literally changed his Twitter handle to be Jira Joe. Now, again, a lot of companies would say, you can't use that. That's our brand name for this product. You can't brand yourself as this. But actually, we love that Joe is such an ambassador. And so Joe has actually spoken at a number of our events. He engages with me and a number of other employees on Twitter. And his team actually won our technical team award a couple of years ago. And as part of that, we were able to host an Ask Me Anything session with his team. This is a nice symbiotic relationship. Joe gives tons of advice and tons of sales pitches for us that we don't even know about. We have no influence over. And every so often, he'll pop into my mentions, he'll pop into the Atlassian mentions with just a bit of joy. He's a delightful human. But again, we want to build this and nurture this with him, not shut it down because he's changed his Twitter handle to identify with our product. Rule number four, create that symbiotic relationship. So I love this example from Gravy. Gravy is a payments processing company. Again, with 
kind of the boring, again, they don't have puppies, right? So Casey Graham is their founder and CEO, and he actually has nearly 30,000 followers on LinkedIn. And you might be saying, okay, well, sure. He's a founder, he's a CEO, of course he's got a big following. But in fact, multiple employees from Gravy have between 4,000 and 12,000 followers on LinkedIn. Do you think they're only talking about Gravy and payment processing? Of course not. They talk about culture, they talk about general business acumen, they talk about how to build strong relationships with their clients, and they show up all over the place. I'm not even in their target market, and I know who all these folks are because I see them on LinkedIn and I trust them. Next, Refine Labs. So anybody who is in the dark funnel, dark social, attribution, all the games uh, that we do in digital marketing probably knows about Refine Labs and specifically Chris Walker. So Chris Walker is the founder of Refine Labs, and he has over 88,000, probably over 90,000 now, followers on LinkedIn. And again, you're probably saying, yeah, but he's the founder. He's the CEO. He's on every week. He's hosting Demand Gen Live every week. That's not fair. But if you look at how many followers other employees from Refine Labs have, you'll notice that it's getting into the tens of thousands. So for example, Megan Bowen talks a lot about culture and hiring. And speaking of hiring, <laughs> I don't know if you've been on LinkedIn lately, but everyone is shouting, we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring. Dude, I get it. All you people need talent. I don't care. You just posting a job posting tells me nothing about why I should want to work for you. You telling your employees to post, here, just throw this link onto LinkedIn, and that's how we're going to get people to come and apply for this job posting. So I'll show you another example from something that I posted talking about a program that I was launching for new grads. And it says, oh, you seem smart, but we're looking for someone with more experience. Oh, I really wish we could hire someone, but we really need someone who can hit the ground running. You know, come back to us in a couple of years when you have a bit more experience. And I basically talked about my personal story, trying to find a job when I first graduated and how hard it was. And then I said, actually, now I'm in the position that I can hire new grads. Who wants to come work for me? Who do you want to tag? Your kids, your friends' kids, professors, tag your students? Who wants to apply? We ended up getting so many applications in the first three days that recruiting had to shut it down because they couldn't keep up with getting them, right? I ended up getting over 30,000 views on this post. And again, at the time, I only had about 3,000 followers, 4,000 followers, so I, I don't have a big account, um, in the first 24 hours. So this is the trend line. Again, this is showing from Shield. It'll show you the lifespan of the post. And I didn't do this by myself, right? It was trending along, bumping along. It had just shy of 3,000 views, you know, some tens of likes, tens of comments. But look what happens when the Atlassian company page engages on my post. They brought their half a million followers to me. And you'll notice it doubled in an hour, and then obviously completely change the trajectory of the post. So earlier, I showed a, a scenario where I outperformed the company page despite them having 100 times the followers. But here, what we see is the company page amplifying me. And look at what can happen when the company page brings their power to your employee's personal brand. And you might say, okay, well, you're hiring, you're hiring new grads. Like, again, that's not fair. You're kind of cheating. Like, of course, all the early career people want to get a job. So I'll show another example. And again, I use some of these because I can, I can compare both from the company page and my own page. But here I talked about our team award. This is for an event. Now, how many of you are trying to get people to come to your event and no one freaking cares, right? It gets zero engagement, very little click through. No one cares about your event. My post got over 9,000 impressions talking about the different types of teams that I get to engage with as part of my job hosting for this team award. And again, I did not do this by myself. So the event team reached out to me and they said, Ashley, you seem to do well on LinkedIn. Please promote the team award. We need more people to submit. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this my way, which I did. So I posted it, posted the link, and then I immediately reached out to our social media manager and said, hey, I posted this, please come amplify it from the company page, which she did. She did that so quickly, within 30 minutes, 
which again, time to first engagement is a thing that we'll talk about. She did that so quickly that I don't even have the numbers of what it was doing before it just skyrocketed because of their reach amplifying my reach. We ended up getting a lot of award submissions. We ended up having a wonderful amount to choose from. Rule five, in-feed engagement is greater than CTR. So this is a post from one of our product managers. Her name is Erica, and she was so excited about releasing this feature. Now, I don't know about you, but usually for feature releases, somebody writes up a tweet that says, today we are very excited to announce this feature. Please click to the blog to read about the feature. Why, why has no one clicked my blog? Guys, there's a feature. There's a blog post, right? No one freaking cares. However, when a product manager says, I am personally excited about this thing that me and my team have built, then what happens? What happens when the whole rest of the team also gets excited and says, we built this and we're proud of it? We're excited to give this to you. So there's a couple of things in here that we did to hack the LinkedIn algorithm. Full disclosure, the LinkedIn algorithm changes all the time. Richard Vanderblom is the fellow you should follow if you want to know how it's changing minute to minute. So actually, some of these techniques, um, LinkedIn is starting to throttle them because more people are using them. But I'll share them. They will work hopefully for a little longer. First, personal perspective. So she says, for a PM, there's nothing better than to wake up in the morning to customer feedback like this. And then she shares some social proof of feedback that customers have given. Next, at mention, not hashtag. So this is actually a recent change for some profiles. In order for a company page to engage on a post, they need to be at mentioned, not hashtagged. Hashtag Atlassian can't engage. At mention Atlassian can engage. Now there's a progressive rollout happening to allow company pages to engage on anything. So your company page may or may not have this, but make sure if you're asking employees, influencers, speakers, partners, tell them to at mention so that the page can engage. Next, link in comments. So LinkedIn is greedy. They don't want anybody to leave LinkedIn. They want you to stay on LinkedIn. And in fact, they penalize your reach significantly if you put a link in the post. So we've all gotten smart and figured out, oh, we'll just put that link right in the comments. Now, LinkedIn is throttling that a little bit because uh, they also penalize the reach if the author has the first comment, which then brings me to this next one here, um, talking about having carousels. So if you, you're saying, okay, we want people to stay, we want them to engage, that dwell time matters. Using carousels, which is basically just uploading a document, it could be a slide deck, a PDF that people can swipe through, that helps to increase that engagement. And then having reactions and comments and also the time to first engagement. So both of those things matter a lot. So basically what we did is we had Erica post this and then we asked all of our employees to go on and say, super thrilled to see this, congratulations to the team. And we did that very quickly so that it signaled to the algorithm, oh, people are engaging. Now, again, <laughs> LinkedIn is starting to throttle this tactic. Um, basically they reduce the reach if too many people from the same company engage. So in theory, having your partners or your customers be willing to come in and engage is a great way to game the algorithm without gaming the algorithm. And then I also wanna show this. This is an example um, from something that I engaged on. So Guy Raz, who hosts the How I Built This podcast, hosted an episode interviewing our founders. And someone says, um, thank you so much for clarifying. I was unaware that Jira is from Atlassian. I really appreciate that philosophy. So now I wanna know more about the product. And this is my favorite part here. She goes, <coughs> marketers, come bless my feed. Oh, oh, you want a marketer? This is my favorite, right? Somebody invited me into their conversation. She didn't actually specifically invite me, but she invites a marketer who hangs out on LinkedIn and I'm that nerd. 100% I'm coming into your comments. So look what I did. I said, if you want a marketer, I got you. And actually I can do you one better. Jira is available for free. So you can try it out and invite your teammates. And I said, also, I took a quick look through your LinkedIn profile and I have pulled a couple of articles and features that I think would probably be very applicable to you. Hope this is helpful, right? And she immediately DMs me and says, you are awesome, you just wowed me and I would love to connect. Turns out she's an organizer for the Project Management Institute's conference. 
And she said, I'd love for you to come and talk all about Atlassian products. Oh, you, you want me to come stand on stage to the perfect ideal customer profile and talk about what we do? Why, yes, I would love to do that. But actually, I am not the best person to deliver this presentation. In fact, my colleague Kelly would be perfect for this opportunity. Now, Kelly actually was a customer who I interviewed as part of our team award process two or three years ago. She then became a product marketer at Atlassian, and she is the perfect person to talk about how Atlassian products helped Alsac St. Jude move their work forward. She's not there to pitch Atlassian on behalf of Atlassian. She's there as a former customer talking about how she implemented things. Rule number six, audience preferences trump brand guidelines. And I know if you're a designer in the room, you're about to get real angry. So this is the Atlassian Instagram feed just before the pandemic. We're all in the office. We got pictures of cupcakes. We got like a random event thing that looks like it was professionally shot. Talking about International Women's Day, right? Like this feed doesn't maybe look the most cohesive. It's maybe not the, the nicest version of the feed. Now, when the pandemic hit, um, oh, sorry, I'll show you. You'll see there's pretty good engagement here. Averaging at the time, um, we didn't have as many followers. We had around 12,000. Averaging somewhere between, you know, 300 likes and 600 likes and, you know, a handful of comments. Now, when the pandemic hit, we couldn't get those pictures anymore. We couldn't take those in-office pictures because we all had to work from home. So this is what our feed looked like. It's fairly cohesive, right? You've got this branded situation going on. We're specifically talking about pride. This is clearly a series. Who wants to guess how the engagement looks on this? Who thinks it went up? One, one person thinks it went up. Who thinks it went down? I know, I've primed you. How far down do you think it went? It went real bad, real bad. Like, 57 com like likes? Y'all, that is just sad. And it wanes as we go, right? Like, it's starting to drop even more. Now, one thing we've learned is that people love our logo in all forms and all fashions. In fact, I took most of these photos on my phone. They're not even particularly good photos. You can't print them. They're not high res. But look at this engagement, right? This sticker here. It's a laptop sticker, we're at an event, and I held it up, I held it up, and I held up my phone, and I'm like, barely able to balance. How did this thing get almost 500 likes? Why? I don't know, people love the logo. Great, put the logo out there. The other thing they love is our employees, and particularly our founders. Put the faces up there. And again, these are not the most cohesive photos, but they show that humanity. And finally, this photo. This one confuses me the most. At the time, we had less than 10,000 followers. And to date, this photo of ducks, the little rubber ducks from a recruiting event, is still one of our most liked photos. So it's hard, right? We have these guidelines. We have this lovely template. We have our logo guidelines about how you frame the shot. People freaking like the ducks, right? Give the people what they want. After all, the whole point is to foster that trust in community. All right, rule number seven, leverage emerging styles and platforms. So I was in a conversation with somebody today talking about TikTok. And I have the struggles because I don't wanna do the TikToks. Like I am okay doing the videos, but do I have to do the TikToks? Cause I don't want to do that. But in fact, TikTok is starting to make its way into business to business communication, not just consumers. So again, I'm going to go back to Sweetfish here. They actually do a really great job jumping on these emerging trends. And so they have this hashtag about smashing commodity content. And so they've got a number of their employees, both on TikTok and short form LinkedIn video, basically choosing a way to smash commodity content. So you've got one guy who's like hitting a jug with a bat. And this girl, she's like smashing a cream pie. This person popping a balloon. And it's all different but it resonates because each of them got to choose the thing that seems most interesting to them. This is how they think about it. And then they're taking it a step further. So this is Emily DeBrito Brady. Highly recommend you follow her on LinkedIn. She has started experimenting with TikTok using different movies as if they were marketers. So if the Avengers were marketers, if Napoleon Dynamite was a marketer, if Harry Potter was a marketer. And people love these because she's telling these marketing truths 
to an audience, she knows her audience, in a new format in a funny way. So where are you on this spectrum? How are you thinking about social media? Are you in this communication phase where you're still telling people, hello, yes, we have released a new feature, thank you. Hello, yes, I have a webinar, kindly join me, thank you. Are you forcing yourselves into conversations? Are you limiting your employees to only tagging you in? Or are you fostering community? So I'll end with one final example. Our offices, as we go through all of these little waves of COVID, our offices were open for a brief time. And we decided, this was in December, that we were gonna do a bake-off. And so our community team said, what is the value of having Atlassian's brand associated with the Great British Baking Show? We don't know, but we feel like it could be huge. Who is going to be the face of this little campaign? And y'all, I got to tell you, I have been training for this. Okay, I picked up cake decorating during quarantine. Blue is my favorite color. I may or may not have joined the company because the logo is my favorite color. And so I had this blue dress. Um, I had all the cake makings and also, you know, I am myself. I like to talk to people. I like to be on stage. So like, clearly this campaign was made for me, right? So I baked a cake. We did a little photo shoot. We put out a call for entries to say, please submit your recipes, videos, and photos of your bakes. And if you can incorporate Atlassian in some way, please do that. And I got to tell you, I don't actually know how many submissions we got. I don't know the number of impressions that the first share got on social media. I don't know how many people clicked on the link. But what I do know is that I got to have a slice of cake with one of my colleagues. And I do know that I have cake dates set up with a number of people from different industries and different parts of the world because I shared this on LinkedIn. So I will ask you, which is more valuable for our brand? Thank you very much.